Hello everyone, so <clears throat> today is the revision session for your topic 4, which is accounting for overheads. In this accounting for overheads, we cover 7 learning outcomes. All right. So in today's lecture, we're going to revise all the learning outcomes that we already covered in our previous three sessions. <clears throat> so, first learning outcome was about the uh, cost classification on the behalf of the behavior, means the types of cost on behalf of behavior. So, there are mainly four kinds of cost fixed cost, variable cost, semi variable cost, and step cost. So that is basically the behavior. We're gonna we're not gonna cover learning outcome two because this is not part of your syllabus. So we move on to the learning outcome three. Uh, learning outcome three is basically about economic of scales or the cost behavior examples on the behalf of the per units. Like as variable cost per unit does not change as per the level of activity change. Right? And fixed cost per unit change as the production level increase or decrease. This is called the behavior. Right? Uh, after learning outcome three, we move on to the learning outcome four. Learning outcome four is about the accounting for overheads. What will be the accounting treatment of overheads? How we transfer information from various kinds of overheads account to the overhead main T account and then overhead trans overhead account balance transfer to the working process and working process finished good and finished good cost of goods sold and so on. Same like as direct material and direct labor. So that is your learning outcome four. Learning outcome five is about the cost allocation of service department to the production department. Alright. Why? Because in production department uh, on the behalf of production department, we calculate factory overheads, right? In this factory overhead, there is not only 100% cost of factory uh, indirect expenses comes from the operating department. There is a contribution of service department as well. So we're going to allocate it, the cost of service department to the production department. So we have mainly three methods. Uh, in these three methods included, the first method is um, direct distribution method, right? Second one is a step down method, and third one is an algebraic method. So we're gonna study these three different methods and the situations to apply these three methods as well, right? That is your learning outcome five. Learning outcome six is about the allocation of factory overheads. How do we allocate total factory overhead cost? So mainly we have two different approaches. The first one is a traditional costing method, and second one is the ABC, stands for activity-based costing method. So with the help of these two different methods, we allocated the total cost of factory overheads, right? Uh, some companies, they apply uh, traditional costing, and some company apply activity-based costing. So it depends upon companies to company and situations of the company because traditional costing has a different situations and different nature of the company. And act for the activity-based costing methods, the company nature is different. Right? So that is your uh, cost allocation method. And the last learning outcome, which is learning outcome seven, is about the uh, over and under applied. Right? So all, in terms of the over and under apply, I have to give you some numerical examples. With the help of those examples, you can learn what is over and under applied and what will be the accounting treatment for over and under applied overhead. Right? So we start with the <coughs> uh, introductions of accounting for overheads. In introductions, we're going to have a look at <coughs> what is the meaning of overhead first, right? So, introduction. Right. So, 
What is factory overheads? Factory overheads means any kinds of cost apart from direct material and direct labor in a factory. It's called factory overheads. Correct? Beside direct material and direct labor. Alright. Beside this cost, whatever cost occur in a factory, of course in relation of production, it's called factory overhead. Sometimes we call it manufacturing overhead. In simple language, we call it indirect manufacturing cost. Alright? Of course, because these costs, direct material and direct labor is your direct cost. Right? Direct cost, indirect is a total cost. Right? Apart from indirect cost, whatever cost occur, that's called indirect cost. Alright? So, what are the types of factory overheads? Factory overheads divided into three parts. First one is indirect material cost. All right. Second one is indirect labor cost. All right. And third one is the other indirect cost. All right. So start with indirect material cost. Indirect material cost means the cost which is indirectly involved into production. All right, the cost which is indirectly involved into production related to material. All right. So, what is the indirect material cost example? Uh, the example is it could be a wastage when company produce its product. So, when worker they are involved into production, probably sometime worker they waste the material. So, the material wastage also an example of indirect material cost. All right. Uh, another example of indirect material. For example, here is a water bottle. All right. In this water bottle, uh, uh, here is a label. All right. So, a company use some kinds of glue to stick that label. All right. So that glue is an example of um, uh, indirect material cost. All right. Because the main material for this product, of course, is the water and the plastic. All right. But we need a glue in order to stick this label on the bottle. All right. So that we be using the glue or any other kinds of chemicals to stick that paper on the, on, on the bottle. That is example of indirect material cost. All right. Next one is the indirect labor cost. As you can see the name, indirect. So means in simple language the labor which is indirectly involved into production it's called indirect labor cost right such as uh, supervisor all right the cost of supervision is indirect labor cost because the supervisor doesn't directly involve into a production is what supervisor does not work on the machine supervise basically monitor and look at the people all right the people who are working in a factory so whatever money we are paying to the supervisor, that's called the indirect labor cost. We have some other examples of indirect labor cost as well, such as the security guard. All right. Security guards basically take care of the security, uh, take care of the security, or the, uh, the, 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 the inventories or some other kinds of assets related to the factory. All right. So whatever money we are paying to security guards, that's also an example of indirect labor cost. <clears throat> uh, so apart from indirect material and indirect labor, now we have some other indirect cost as well, which cannot be categorized indirect material and indirect labor because of the nature. So what are the examples of other indirect cost? So the first one could be a depreciation. All right, you know the depreciation over the period of time, value of assets goes down, depreciated. So the cost of depreciation of the assets which is using in a factory. All right, so depreciation is a other component or other parts of the factory overheads. Right. Another one is a 
rent. All right. We are renting a factory and we pay periodic rent all right, to the landlord of the factory. Landlord of that asset. All right. So that is called the others. All right. <clears throat> Um, another example could be uh, insurance. We could have uh, insurance for the assets which is used for the production purpose or the insurance for that particular plant. All right? So that also example of the other factory over here. Another example could be repair and maintenance. repair and maintenance. So we have to repair and maintain the assets which evolve into production such as the machine. So whatever money we are spending for the repair and the maintenance of that machines, that could be example of your factory overheads. Right? So that, that's all about the meaning and the types of factory overheads. So that's the basic introductions about the factory overheads. Right? So now we move on to the learning outcome one, which is the nature and the behavior of the cost, or cost classification on behalf of nature and behavior. Right. <clears throat> so learning outcome one, which is cost classification. Cost classification only on behalf of nature and behavior because that is more relevant to the factory overhead. Right. So, <clears throat> so here the cost mainly the, according to nature and behavior is classified into four categories. Right. So the first one is a fixed cost. Second one is a variable cost. Third one is a semi variable cost or semi fixed cost. Sometimes we call it semi fixed or sometimes we call it semi variable. Right. And the last one is a step cost. So we talk about the uh, fixed cost. Fixed cost means cost remain unchanged at different level of production. It means level of activities, level of production increase or decrease, but cost remain unchanged. All right. So the graph of fixed cost looks like this. The types of fixed, variable, semi-variable, I also explain you in our second lecture, or our second topic, when we talk about the material, accounting for material, at that time I also explained about the fixed and variable cost. Right? So that is your fixed cost. So that is your quantity, y x-axis, and y, y axis is your cost. All right? So let's say one, two, three. So you can see that it means if you produce product here, that quantity, your cost is this level. All right. You produce second quantity increase, cost remains same. Let's say it's ten dollars. So let's say two, four, six, ten, whatever. So let's say it's ten dollars. Now again. Quantity increase, all right? Cost remains same. So the idea is that no matter level of production increase or decrease, all right? Cost remain unchanged, all right? That is called the fixed cost, all right? So what are the examples of the fixed cost? So the best example of the fixed cost is a cost of. Supervision. 
no matter production increase, decrease, there is a cost of the supervision will be the same. Because one, one worker is producing product, we are producing one product, we need a supervisor. All right? We're producing five, ten products, we still need supervisor. supervisor. So that's why the cost of supervision is a fixed cost. Another example could be a depreciation. You produce product, run machine, you pay for depreciation. All right? You produce less, machine run less, still you are paying the same depreciation. You are not producing product, machine is not running, still you have to pay for depreciation because it's a value of assets goes down over the period of time. Merely assets means the assets which is merely machine in nature. Right. So that is that is the fixed cost. Right. Next one is a variable cost. All right. So variable cost means when cost behave as per the level of production. All right. Means quantity increase, cost increase. Quantity decrease, cost decrease. Right? High production, high cost, low production, low cost, and no production, no cost. Right? So that is the variable cost. So what is a graph of variable cost? So graph of variable cost looks like this. Alright? That is your variable cost. So here is your quantity, same, and here is a cost. Right? So you can see that you produce Let's say one, two, three. So you produce one product, that is your cost. You, you produce two product, that is your cost. Three product, that is your cost. All right. So the idea is that your quantity increase, your cost increase. Quantity decrease, your cost decrease. You do not produce any product at, the, at this point. Right? No production, no cost. Right? So that is the example of the variable cost. Oh, sorry, that's the graph of the variable cost. Now what is the example of variable cost? So variable cost example could be a direct material cost. You consume more material, your material cost will be increased. You consume less material, material cost will be reduced. Right? And no, no production, no material, no cost. No cost of that material. Next example could be direct labor cost. All right, we need more workers, we pay for more workers. All right, we need less workers, we have less, we pay less. We do, we don't produce anything. We will not hire any worker to produce product. All right, so direct labor, the people who are directly working on the machine to produce product. All right, so that is basically direct labor cost. All right. Other examples could be a fuel or electricity that we require to run the machine to produce product. All right. So we are paying for fuel, gas, or electricity to run the machines, and that is directly involved in production. It means we run the machine, we pay for gas, fuel, or electricity, or if we do not produce product, we are not going to pay for all this cost to run the machine. Right. So that is the variable cost. So after variable cost, we have a semi-variable cost. <clears throat> so what is semi-variable cost? As you can see, that's semi-variable. Semi-variable means combination of fixed and variable. All right? It's a combination of both cost. All right? So both costs occur when you are involved into such kinds of uh, production or any kinds of quantity or any kinds of activities. Right. So, how, so better I draw the graph to explain the uh, semi variable cost. Right. <clears throat> so the graph of semi variable cost looks like this. Alright, so this is the semi variable cost. So, what does it mean? It means from 
zero point. Let's say it's a 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. From 0 to 15, right? From the level 0 to 15, you produce one product, two product, three product, or four products. Your cost is remain unchanged. Alright? So you can see that you produce that, that is your cost. Two, that is your cost. Three, that is your cost. Four, that is your cost. You produce one, two, three, four. Your cost remain unchanged. All right, so that is your fixed cost. All right. So you are bearing a fixed cost, which is a fifteen dollars. All right. Fixed cost, which is fifteen dollars. All right. At this point. All right. But if you cross that particular limit or the quantity limits in that case your cost will turn into a variable cost means if you are producing any additional units your cost will be increased all right so let's say if you cross that particular limits so your cost will increase so let's say here so 30 dollar is your fixed plus variable so that is your semi variable cost in this in this 30 dollars 15 is your fixed and 15 is your variable all right so now you will be thinking that what is the example of the semi variable cost when does it occur right? So the best example of the semi variable cost I can give you like as your um, your mobile phones, all right? Your your mobile phone internet, 3G. Right? So let's say, uh, for example, you take a plan for let's say ten dollars, all right, per month plan. In this ten dollars, let's say they give you uh, I don't know 500 megabytes for one month, for example, all right. So in this 500 megabytes per month, if you use 100 megabytes, 200 megabytes, 300 megabytes, or 500 megabytes, your cost is $10, which is fixed. You use zero to 500, all right? Your cost is fixed. But if you cross the limits, which is 500 within a month, so let's say, now is the 25th day of the month, all right? So you have five days more to to top up the new uh, for your for your next month internet. So you have five days more left, but you already used all 500 uh, uh, megabytes, all right? So let's say you already used 500 megabytes. So in that case, if you are consuming more internet, I mean, if you're using more internet, your mobile phone balance will be reduced. The balance, your money will be minus from your mobile phone. Let's say mobile company charge, I don't know, let's say 10 cents or 50 cents, let's say, all right, 50 cents per, um, per usage or, uh, per megabytes, all right. Per megabytes. So if you use, let's say, um, I don't know, let's say if you use 100 megabytes more, all right. So 100 megabytes more means you're gonna be like almost five dollars, all right. So uh, in that case, uh, your ten dollars plus five dollars. Its total is fifteen dollars. So fifteen dollars will be your mobile phone bill. So fifteen dollars is your semi variable cost. It's a combination of ten dollars, which is fixed, and five dollars, which is variable. All right. So that is the ideas behind your semi variable cost. All right. So next one is a uh, uh, step cost. All right. 
<clears throat> Step cost also similar to the semi variable cost. It's also a combination of uh, fixed and variable, but that combination is worked together within a relevant range. Right, so what does it mean? Like as in semi variable cost, once you used your fixed cost, right, then your variable cost will start and fixed cost will not come, back, come again. As you're using, your cost is increasing. So once your limit of the fixed cost is finished, your cost will turn into a variable cost. That is your semi-variable. But in step cost, it's a little bit different. In step cost, uh, your fixed and variable both are moving together. All right, fixed variable, fixed variable. So that's why I, I, I explain you through the graph. So that is basically the graph of your step cost. All right. So it's, it's, it's like a step. So you can see that here is a range. Right. Here is a particular range. Right. Here. That is your relevant range. If you are within a range, your cost is fixed. But if you cross that range, your cost will be increased. Let's say zero, ten. 30. All right, so that's your cost. Let's see 50, 100, 150, so on. All right, so I give example of vehicle's bill. All right, or tire. All right, you know that. In our motorbike or in our uh, car, we have a vehicles. Oh, sorry, we have a um, wheel, and wheel has a life. All right. So after a particular kilometers, we have to change the wheel. So let's say the life of um, uh, a wheel is uh, 10 kilometers. So after 10 kilometers, we have to change the wheel. For example. So um, if you run your vehicles. 0 to 10 kilometers, your cost will be same. All right, $50. So you run 1 kilometer, 2 kilometers, 5 kilometers, or 9 or 10 kilometers. Your cost will be 50. So like 50 or 100. Let's say 100. Because we have 100 here. So 0 to 10, cost is fixed. All right, cost is fixed. As we learned in, from the fixed cost graph, which is like this, all right? So that is the fixed cost graph. So here is your fixed cost, all right? But if you cross the limits, let's say your vehicles run 12 kilometers. So zero to 10, all right? And 10 to 20. So it's 10 to 20 means you your cost will be increased here. Your cost will be increased. Why? Because you have to change the tire. The cost is let's say another fifty dollars. So from zero to I don't know zero to twenty, your cost is one hundred and fifty. Right. So zero to twenty. So no, not one hundred fifty. Right. So one hundred and one hundred. So the total is two hundred. So zero to twenty kilometers, your cost is two hundred dollars. Right. Zero to twenty, your cost is. So 10 to 20, you have only 10 kilometers. You run uh, 11 kilometers, 12 kilometers, 19 kilometers, 20 kilometers, your cost is fixed. But if you cross the limits, your cost will be increased again. Here, cost will be increased again. Here, all right? So you run that kilometers, cost is fixed. You run here, you run here, or you run here, or run here. Your cost will be fixed. But if you cross it, 
So your cost will be increased. So increase means, of course, variable. All right. So variable. But that variables give you another another range. All right. And that means another limit. All right. So you run within a limit. That's fine. You don't have to change tire. But if you cross that limits of your kilometers, then you have to change the tire. If you change the tire, again, your cost will be increased. So that's why the graph of step cost is look like steps. All right. So that is the example of your um, step cost. Not only the wheel or tire is an example of step cost. Some people, they argue that cost of supervision or supervisor cost is also a step cost because one supervisor cannot supervise unlimited people unlimited workers all right so in that case one supervisor has a limited people let's say one supervisor can maxima uh, supervise maximum 20 people so 0 to 20 people we have a one supervisor all right 20 to 40 people then we have a second supervisor second supervisor means cost increase but second supervisor also a limit uh, so 22 workers, 25 workers, 30 workers, 35 workers, 39 workers, or 40 workers. We do not need a third supervisor. All right. But if the worker exceeds the limit, which is 40, then your cost will be increased. You need another supervisor. All right. So that's the example of the step cost. All right. So that's all about learning outcome one, which is the cost nature, really. That's the nature of the cost. Variable, all right. Fixed, semi-variable, and the step cost. All right. Now we move on to the next learning outcome, which is learning outcome three. As I said that in the beginning of the lecture, that learning outcome two is not part of your syllabus. So learning outcome three. Learning outcome three is about the behavior. All right. It means, you know that, what is the nature of total fixed cost? The nature of total fixed cost is, is fixed, doesn't change, remain constant, all right? And the nature of total variable cost is change, all right? Now, what is the behavior of variable cost per unit? The behavior of variable cost per unit is a fixed. All right. What does it mean? For example, you are paying a ten dollars per hour to worker. Worker works three hours. All right. So means ten dollars per hour, ten dollars per hour, ten dollars per hour, and worker work three hours. So your total variable cost will be $30, but your, your labor cost per hour will be $10. So $10, $10, $10. So the idea is that variable cost per unit will be fixed. All right. Total variable cost change, the behavior of fixed cost per unit also a change all right the behavior of fixed cost fixed cost per unit will be changed it means as we are producing more product fixed cost per unit will be keep reducing same like as your economic of scales all right so for the given level of um, uh, cost we should maximize the number of product if you produce the maximum product then um, um, then the cost per product will be reduced like as a supervisor the cost of supervision is a is a is a uh, uh, fix and one supervisor let's say supervise 0 to 20 products all right so what company wants company want to produce as much as possible which is the limit is 20, 20 products so company wants to produce 20 products all right if company will produce so let's say the cost is hundred dollar all right so 
if company will ask supervisor to supervise 20 products so the cost of per product will be five dollar all right if supervisor will supervise only one product so the cost per product will be hundred dollars right so you can see that it's change all right if you supervise 20 products or if you supervise one product all right so that is called fixed cost per unit all right so that is mainly the behavior of the fixed cost per unit so you have to keep in your mind the nature of total fixed cost and the behavior of the fixed cost per unit so i repeat total total fixed cost remains same no matter level of production increase or decrease but fixed cost per unit change as per level of production right Total variable cost change as per the level of production, but variable cost per unit remains same. No matter you produce more, you produce less. No matter worker work more or worker work less, company will pay them fixed per hour or fixed fixed per product. All right. So that's all about your learning outcome uh, three. All right. So now we move on to the learning outcome four so learning outcome four is about the accounting treatment i won't go in detail of accounting treatment because it's quite uh, quite basic quite similar to direct material and direct labor accounting treatment that you learn in your past few weeks all right so <clears throat> learning outcome four all right which is the accounting treatment So, you know, as we learn from our introductions, uh, that there are different kinds of cost involved into factory overheads. All right. So the idea is that, as you learn in your financial accounting, that uh, uh, when we records the um, accounting information in company accounts, we make the journals and ledgers. In ledgers, we are making the various key accounts. So here I'm talking about the T accounts, which only belongs to factory overheads, such as <coughs> depreciation, all right, such as rent accounts, all right, such as insurance. So, for example, I'm just giving three uh, examples here. So, what happened? So these three kinds of T accounts will be transferred to the factory overheads because all are the factory overheads all right so all will transfer to the factory overheads all right and factory overhead will transfer to the work in process all right so it's transferred to the work in process you know that because work in process is a direct material direct labor and factory overhead all right but remember we do not write as a factory overhead we write it as a applied factory overhead so we use the word applied factory overhead because we are making a plan here we are making a, we are estimating how much money we're going to spend for factory overhead for the throughout the year all right so here is the applied working process all right? and then this working process will transfer to finished goods and finished goods will transfer to cost of goods sold and so on all right so if you have applied factory overheads here when you are preparing your cost of goods sold at the end of the period when you're going to make a balance of your accounts you will not get the actual number all right and then you will compare your applied is over and under all right so here i'm not going to talk much in detail about this applied factory overheads so you will look this applied factory overhead in our learning outcome seven now we're learning outcome four when we reach learning outcome seven then i will give you some kind of numerical examples uh, and the accounting treatment of applied factory overhead in detail all right so just keep in your mind here 
that the various T accounts related to factory overhead will transfer to the factory overhead. And you know that factory overhead will transfer to working process, same like there is direct material and direct labor. And then this one is here. Alright, so that's this quite basic learning outcome, uh, basic accounting treatment of factory overheads. So that's all about learning outcome four. Right? So now we move on to the learning outcome five, which is very important, and that's going to be part of your final exam. Right? of uh, service department cost to the production department. Right. Allocation of service department cost to operating department. That is your uh, learning outcome five. All right. So, what is that? Uh, okay, back to I write for you. You know that we have a total cost. All right. Total cost is a combination of direct material, direct labor, and factory overheads. All right. Okay. Of course, we are not talking about direct material and direct labor here because we are talking. We, this is the, the, the factory overhead. Right. Now, you should keep in your mind that this factory overhead cost, not 100%, comes from the production department. All right. 100% does not only comes from the production department. There is a contribution of some service department or support department in order to produce products. So in, in simple language, some other service departments, they are providing service to the production department and that service is necessary to produce product. All right. So it means some other department also contributing, some other service department all right sometimes we call it support department as well because they are supporting production department all right they are supporting production department to produce product so service department also have a, some kinds of contribution and we should not ignore it all right why because let's say uh, direct material seven all right direct labor five and let's say overhead is five all right and in this five let's say two dollars come from operating department and three dollars come from the service department all right if you ignore service department cost all right if you ignore it so means your cost will be underestimated, which is two. All right, your your overhead cost underestimated. Your total cost will be underestimated. Your total cost will be underestimated. Your profit will be overestimated. All right, your profit overestimated. You are paying unnecessary tax to the governments because that is charging the profit. You are distributing more dividend to the shareholders. Right. So the idea is that overall your income statement will be manipulated, right? and or we can say that it's not a really true and fair uh, numbers that we are providing to our users. All right. So our financial statement numbers are not accurate. Your financial statement is misappropriated. All right. So in that case, user decision not gonna be accurate. So overall, everything gonna be messed up. All right. So, so the idea is that we should not take 
this allocation or this issue or topic too lightly. We have to take it this topic very seriously because that's contributing in the sales. Oh, sorry, in, in, in the cost. Right? And then of course you know that in order to estimate the price of the product, we have to look at the cost first. So if the cost estimation is the wrong, then price determination will be wrong too. Price wrong, cost wrong, profit wrong, and overall all the income statement and financial statement gonna be wrong. Alright? So that's why we have to take these outcomes very seriously. Right? This topic very seriously in our company. Alright? So here you already got the ideas why allocation of service department costs is important for the production department. Right? Now we go more in detail. So here, we have uh, three different methods, all right? We have uh, three different methods. We use it to allocate it, uh, production cost, I mean, allocate it service department cost to the operating department, all right? So these three different methods involved. The first method is a direct distribution method. Second one is a step down method. All right. And third one is a algebraic method. Alright, so we have a three methods here: direct distribution, step down, and algebraic method. And, and each of method has a different situation to apply it. Alright. So, we start with the direct distribution method. So what are the situations to apply the direct distribution method? So direct distribution method we apply when, <coughs> you know that we have a service department. We have let's say two service department, two production department, all right? You know that service department provide a service to the operating department, all right? Service department provides service to the operating department. All right, but you know that service one service department they are not only providing services to the operating department, they also provide service to the other service department as well. That is a situation. All right. So sometimes they apply. I mean, sometimes they supply the service to the operating department. Sometimes they do not supply the service to the other service department. They are just simply supplying to the operating department. So if this is the situation, we should apply direct distribution method. In short, when one service department does not provide service to the other service department, all right? They are only providing service to the production department. No exchange of services between service to service department. Only service to production department. If this is the situation, we will apply direct distribution method. So probably I can draw a small diagram for you to understand. All right. So let's say we have two service department. One is human resource department. All right. And another one is uh, let's say IT department. All right. And in production we have a two department: production one and production two. All right. So. This is service department. Service department provides service to the production department, HRD, all right? HRD also provides service to the production department, all right? Nothing wrong. Service department, which is IT, provides service to the production one, and IT provides service to the production two, all right? And keep in your mind, these two departments they are not provide service to each other, all right? Only service department to production department, not service to service. If this is the situation, then we will apply direct distribution method. So means we will allocate only production department cost to the operating department. Production department cost to the 
operating the company. All right. So that is called direct distribution out there. All right. So you can have a look. Uh, medical examples, which is given in your lecture slide. All right. <coughs> uh, next one is the step down method. Step down method is applicable when service is a uh, partially distributed. So means service department, of course, providing services to the to the production department. Right? When service department provides service to other service department as well, but their service is a partially distributed. All right? Means they are not taking service back from the service department. All right? So I can write the same example for you. All right? <clears throat> so let's say, same, we have a human resource department, we have IT department, production department one, production department two. All right? <clears throat> so human resource provides service to the production, production two, ID production one, and production two. All right, nothing wrong. Same like as the unconnected uh, data distribution. But here, if human resource department is also providing services to the ID department, but remember, service is a partially distributed. All right, so means make sure human resource department is not taking any service from the id department all right if this is the situation when service department is only giving service to the other service department service department is not taking service only giving all right if this is the situation then we will apply a step down method all right next one is a algebraic method so, algebraic method is a combination of, of course, direct distribution and step down method. Right? So, I use the same example. So, it means human resource to production, production, production one, production two by the ID, and here. Human resource is giving services to the ID department and also taking services to the human resource department. All right. So, in this case, if this is the situation, which is more practical than in in, in companies, then like as human resource, human resource department uh, providing uh, services to the ID department because they are providing a workforce. All right, to the production and other service department and human resource department if they are facing any kinds of technical issues related to their their information system services then of course they have to contact the id department and of course they will supply their, their computer services to the human resource department all right so if this is the situation then we will apply algebraic math all right you can see that uh, among these three methods, direct distribution is much more easier compared to step down and algebraic. So the most complicated method is the algebraic method. So I can give you one tip to apply the or to to uh, to to solve the uh, algebraic method situations. Right. So here, I can give you an example here. So I use the same example that I given in your uh, in your lecture slides. Uh, so let's say you have a um, human resource department, all right? You have ID department, production one and production two, all right? So human resource department providing services to all these three departments, ID, P1, P2. And ID also provides services to other three departments, which is HRD, P1, and P2. All right. So let's say, um, so HRD will will allocate a cost here, here, and here. All right. So means here, the cost of IT department will be increased. All right. So you got new cost here. All right. So here you allocate here, here. And here, all right. So here, 
human resource department cost increase. Right, so you go and get another number. And then here, you allocate here, here, and here. Again, your cost increase. All right. Then you allocate here, here, and here. So the idea is in algebraic matter. So make sure you allocate it time to time. Your service department cost to the rest of the department. Why? Because when you give service, your cost is your all cost is allocated. All right. And again, in the next uh, in the next step, service department also giving your service back, so your cost increase too. All right. And your cost increase, you allocate again. All right. Your cost decrease. All right. When you allocate it, and then other service department will give you service too. Your cost increase. So the idea is that. You have to do it step by step. All right. You cannot allocate all cost one time here, here, and here. Because when you allocate all cost here, 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 your cost is nil. But when this department will give you service, then your cost increase again. All right. And then you this number you will allocate. So the idea is that you will keep allocating until your balance becomes zero. If your balance becomes zero, so it means all the cost is allocated to the these two departments. All right. But in your uh, direct distribution and step down method, you can allocate all cost one time. So let's say human resource department providing services to this, this, and this, and human resource is not taking any services from IT. So whatever number you have here, you allocate here here and here so your balance is nil so when this person this department will provide a service and of course it's a step down matter this department not going to provide service to this department so this department will provide service to this and this this is nil that's it so you don't have to go further why because your balance becomes zero same thing with direct distribution matter allocate here allocate this here and here Nothing here, and here, here and here, nothing here. So your balance, zero, all right? So that is the uh, uh, the way to apply algebraic math. And you can see that the algebraic method, the calculation is much more complicated in comparison to the direct distribution and uh, step down math. Right. So that's all about your uh, learning outcome 5. So keep in your mind, learning outcome 5 is a part of your final exam. All right. So make sure you practice the question is given in your uh, lecture slide. All right. So that's all about your uh, learning outcome 5. Now we move on to our next very important learning outcome that's also going to be part of your final exam. Um, which is uh, cost allocation math, all right? Indirect cost or overhead cost allocation math. So learning outcome 6 is a overhead cost allocation math so here we have a uh, so means what is overhead cost allocation math in learning outcome 5 we learn that uh, how to allocate service department cost to the production department all right but we haven't learned that what will be the overhead cost for the single units all right we just learned about the allocation we haven't learned about the total uh, factory overhead cost belongs to one product all right so the idea is that that's it for example um, we have a one product here all right so this product is a combination of three costs you know that direct material, direct labor, and factory overhead. So direct and indirect cost. All right. So you know that 
the nature of direct cost is different from the nature of indirect cost. The nature of direct cost is uh, easy to visible, easy to identify, easy to track or trace. But the nature of indirect cost is different. For example, depreciation. How much is the depreciation of machine involved in this product to produce this product? All right. So it's not easy to identify. Whatever rent we are paying to factory, what is the contribution to produce this uh, product? We cannot easily identify. But direct material and direct labor, we can easily identify. All right. So that's why we have two different methods to identify factory overhead costs related to the product. All right. So these two methods call. So the first one is a. Uh, so the first method is a uh, traditional costing. And another method is the ABC. Stands for activity based costing. Activity based costing. All right. So keep in your mind traditional costing and activity based costing only help us to allocate factory overhead. They don't deal with the direct material and direct labor. In direct material, we already learn about uh, inventory valuation method, which is life of five minute moving average method. And direct labor, we already studied about the three different methods, which is labor hour method, piece rate method, and a modified wage plan. Right? So that these three different methods help us to estimate the labor cost, direct labor cost. Right? So here we have a factory overhead methods, traditional and the activity based costing. Right. So, uh, in traditional costing, uh, we have a step. So, better I write down the step first. Right. So, we have a first step is uh, we will estimate total factory overhead. We have to estimate how much is the total factory overhead, and then we will estimate machine hour or labor hours all right machine hours labor hours which ever is higher whichever is higher either machine hour or labor hours all right we use it to estimate factory overhead right? and uh, keep in your mind if in the question only machine hour given we use machine hour if only labor hour given we use labor hour but if both are given then we use it only one right and third math third step is a predetermined overhead rate predetermined overhead rate so the formula is Step one divided by step two, so it means estimated total factory overhead divided by machine hour or labor hour, whichever is higher. So let's say machine hour is higher. All right, so we use it machine hour. So we got rate. All right. We got the rate total factory overhead divided by machine hour. So let's say total factory overhead is at ten thousand dollars, all right? And machine hour, let's say one thousand uh, hours. Right? So ten thousand dollars divided by one thousand hours. So ten dollar per machine hour is the rate. We use it rate to allocate it factory overhead to single units. So for example, if you produce a single product and for example, two machine hours, it takes two hours for a machine to produce this product, all right? And rate is a $10, all right? So what does it mean? 
$20 is the factory overhead for this product using traditional costing. So we got direct material, direct labor, and factory overheads in order to estimate the cost of this product in order to make the decision. All right, decision making purpose, as you know that. So that's the idea. So I can say that step four means P O H R multiply by hours. It could be a machine hour or labor hour. Remember, if here is machine hour, all right, your rates will be in machine hour, all right, and then you will multiply by machine hour because that rate is machine hour. Of course, you're not gonna apply that machine hour rate with the labor hours. Don't apply. All right. So of course, machine hour rate multiply by machine hours. And you're not going to apply machine hour rate to the labor hours. Right? It doesn't make any sense. All right, so that is your traditional costing. All right? Traditional costing is quite simple, straightforward comparison to the activity-based costing. All right? So now we move on to the activity-based costing. All right? So activity-based costing, again, we have uh, uh, same four steps to estimate the total factory overhead for single unit, single product. But uh, the difference between traditional costing and activity-based costing is, of course, activities. When we produce product, in the production of this product, there are various kinds of activities that may increase your factory overheads. So the idea is that, we will categorize or we will collect total factory overhead from the various activities. So we call it course pool. Whatever various activities we have, each activities we will categorize in a specific pool. That's called the course pool. So step one is we will estimate our cost pool. And remember, and of course I said that various cost pool. So remember, combination of all cost pool is called total factory overhead. All right? For example, uh, purchase order. Purchase order is your activity, and purchase order is your factory overhead. All right? So purchase order is a factory overhead cost. All right? And it's a one activity. Right? So of course, that is a part of your total factory overhead. Another activity could be a, uh, for example. We renting a factory. So factory rent, of course, your factory overhead. And when we rent a factory, we rent according to meter square or square feet. All right. So so square feet or renting could be another your factory overhead. All right. So that is the example of the cost pool. Another example could be a machine setup. Before we start producing product, it's not just open the machine and start producing a product. We have to set up. All right, and when we set up the machine, it takes time, and time means money. Money means factory overheads. It's not a manufacturing because machine hasn't. Uh, we haven't started using that machine to produce product. We are waiting to set up the machine. All right. So whatever time or money we are invested to set up that machine, of course, that is your uh, factory overhead. All right. So they, these are the example of cost pool, and of course, cost pool is a combination of different things. Cost drivers is a combination of various things, various activities. And cost driver is any kinds of action and event which increase or decrease your cost. Right? So for example, before I give the example of purchase order is your cost pool. And in purchase order, we order the multiple orders. Let's say number of orders. So number of order is the cost driver. So if you have a three cost pool, let's say purchase order is your cost pool, rent is your cost pool, and uh, machine setup is your cost pool. Cost driver for the purchase order is number of orders. All right, and uh, rent. Uh, cost driver is a uh, square feet, number of square feet, all right? And uh, 
Sega machine setup, the course driver is the number of set up. All right. So we have, let's say, three pools and of course three uh, driver. Step three is quite similar to your traditional costing. All right. Overhead rate, predetermined overhead rate. All right. So the formula is step one divided by step two. Cost pool divided by cost driver. But remember here, we have a three cost pool, three cost driver. So means we have a three kinds of overhead rate. All right. We have three rates. So we have a three rates. Overhead rate, overhead rate, and overhead rate. And each rate also have a, some kinds of activities. Let's say, for example, uh, we have a purchase order, all right? And we have a rent, square feet, square feet, right? and setup, all right? So for example, your overhead rate for purchase order is a $2 per order, all right? $10 per square feet or whatever, all right? And let's say $20 per setup, all right? So when you produce this product, let's say you order five times, all right? So it means two, multi two here, all right? Two multiplied by five, because $2, is the purchase order. Two dollars multiplied by five times. So your ordering cost for this product is a ten dollars. Alright? Second one is the square feet. So let's say you are using a 50 square feet. 50 square feet. Alright? So five hundred dollar is the cost allocating means your factory over at renting allocated to this product is a 500 and you you set up let's say one time you set up you set up one time so twenty dollars so the idea is that five hundred and thirty dollar is your total factory overhead or factory overhead allocated to this product Keep in your mind this thing. All right. So I repeat again. We have a cost pool, cost driver, and overhead. All right. So cost pool is any kinds of we have various uh, activities associated to the total factory overhead, and combination of all activities is your total factory overheads. All right. And then we have a cost driver, any kinds of action or event that increase or decrease your cost. Next one is our overhead rate. Overhead rate is quite similar to your traditional costing. Step one divided by step two. Step one is a cost pool, and here is a cost driver. All right. So as as I said that we have a three cost pools, so means three cost drivers, so means we have three rates. So let's say purchase order is a two dollars per order, for example. Square feet is a ten dollars per square feet, and twenty dollars per set up. All right. So two, ten, and twenty. For example, uh, you order five times. So to produce this product, you order material five times, which is your cost is ten dollars. And square feet is a ten uh, fifty square feet. The area that you are using to produce this product, the area is renting, of course. Uh, you paying a rent, so that means uh, five hundred dollars. All right, and overhead rate is a uh, oh, sorry. Um, and setup is a $20, all right? And let's say you set, mach set up machine uh, one time, all right? Uh, so, which is your 20. So, this plus this plus this, your total factory overhead related to this product is a $530, all right? So, you can see that comparison to the traditional costing, activity based costing is a more specific in and detail, all right? 
Activity based costing is telling us in very detail all right, what are the reasons behind it? Why? Because we did not ignore each and I mean, we consider each and every single driver, all right, at each and every single activity. But compared to the traditional costing, you can see that in traditional costing, we cover only two drivers machine hours and old labor hour, whichever is higher. All right, so activity based costing is providing more accurate results comparison to the traditional costing. All right, so of course, activity based costing is a, um, uh, more accurate. So it doesn't mean that we always apply activity based costing. As I said in the beginning of the lecture, that it depends upon the nature of company. If your company is a small company, in small company, you have a less activities involved or less activities going on to produce product. All right, we have, you have one or few activities. All right, so in that case, you will apply traditional costing. But if your company is a large, you have various activities. All right, in that case, you will apply activity based costing. All right, for small company, activity based costing may not be affordable. All right, because of the time. So uh, a campaign takes much time to get the results through the activity based costing. It's a time consuming process, com complicated matter comparing, comparing to the traditional costing. And maybe um, uh, traditional cost, I mean small company, they're not going to be really happy in order to uh, spend that much money only just accounting activities of the company. All right. So that's why big companies apply activity based costing and some small companies apply traditional costing as small company has a less activities compared to the large companies all right so that's all about the activity based costing all right now we move on to the uh, last uh, learning outcome which is about over and under apply And remember, in your exams, I'm going to ask you uh, questions related to uh, traditional costing and activity-based costing. You practice the activity that I sent you on your email. Now, learning outcome seven, which is under or over applied. So what is under and over apply? Uh, as you looked at in your learning outcome six, in learning outcome six, we are getting the results which is related to factory overheads. All right, and you know that that result is a predetermined, estimated, budgeted. All right, so we plan how much money we gonna spend here. So we plan means we use that number to complete the cost. All right, so it means. Remember learning outcome four when I when I explained about learning outcome four I I draw the various T accounts and I also said that when we are calculating the total factory overhead in working process we do not write as a total factory overhead we use the word applied all right we use the word applied why applied because that number is estimated or budgeted. All right. So we apply that number to complete the total cost. All right. We apply that uh, factory overhead. We apply factory overhead in order to complete the total cost. We have to estimate the total cost to to determine the price of the product to estimate the profit as well. All right. So that's why when we prepare our work in process all right in our working process we have applied factory overheads so whatever overhead we estimated like this in our in, in my previous example i used the word uh, i calculated $530 so $530 is an applied factory overhead 
So this number is the applied number. And of course, at the end of the year, when I calculate my um, actual numbers, because this number is a plan estimated, at the end of the year, I got the actual factory overhead cost. All right. So at the end of the year, I got actual number. All right. And I use apply number. All right. I use apply number. So I have a two types of number here. So which number are you using? So we will calculate over or under apply. So what does it mean? When I when I apply factory overhead, at that time I, I for example, I estimated my cost will be ten dollars. Apply. All right. I thought my cost will be ten dollars. All right. At the end of the year, for example, I got seven dollars, which is my actual overhead. So the idea is that apply overhead is more than actual overhead. If applied overhead is more than actual overhead, then your overhead is a over apply by three dollars actual is seven but you use ten so you apply over apply much all right for example you are applying ten dollars and at the end of the year you came to know that your actual factory overhead is the 15 not 10 let's say actual all right so what does it mean you were planning that you will spend 10 but actually you are spending 15 so five dollar is a under apply all right five dollar is the under apply all right that is your under apply that is your over apply. All right. So, what will be the accounting treatment for this one? Right. Under and over apply. If you have a under apply, if you have a under apply, you will and more because you use ten dollars right for example here you use ten dollars to prepare your working process and cost of goods and so on so but actually is five so what you have to do you have to increase your factory overhead by five dollars so you will in under apply case you will add the balance which is five dollar all right add the balance to your factory overhead whatever factory overhead whatever number you use it whatever means 10 you use 10 so plus five so you add five if your overhead is under applied if your overhead is over applied all right then you will minus You will minus your overhead by three. All right. So you will increase. All right. Here you will decrease. You will increase your overhead. All right. And you will decrease your overhead. You will do either this and that. Of course, you're not going to do both. Probably you're going to have this situation or this situation. There are very less circumstances when your applied and actual is similar but it depends all right if they are not similar either you're gonna be in this situation or that situation not both if this situation you will increase by the balance which is five all right or you decrease by the balance which is three here all right so now the question is 
where you will increase or decrease because you are very, you are preparing various key accounts direct material direct labor factory overhead working process finished goods cost of goods sold so on so where are you gonna fix this these issues so here you have two options right option one is you will So now the question is where to fix. Alright. Where are you gonna fix? So you're gonna have two situations here, two options you have. Alright. First one is either you increase or decrease your cost of goods sold. Alright, because factory overhead is a part of cost of goods sold. Before you use apply. Because you use apply in your overhead account, apply in working process, apply in your finished goods, and apply in, uh, in cost of goods sold. And you use that applied factory overhead to calculate your total cost. All right. So now you have to fix it. So you can fix either in your cost of goods sold, increase or decrease depends upon under the time. Or second option is you can fix your working process and finish goods and of course if you fix your working process and finish good obviously your cost of goods sold will be changed all right so you have a two option you can change your cost of goods sold you don't need to change your working process uh finish goods you just change your cost of goods sold right working process finish good cost of goods sold. you change your cost of goods sold or you change your working process and finish goods if you change your working process and finish good, obviously your cost of goods are going to be changed too. All right. So either option one, all right, or option two. It's up to you. Whatever options you like, you can pick up. All right. But if you choose option one, you you don't have to fix into accounts. You just fix in your cost of goods sold number. Or if you want to do it in the particular process, then you can fix in your working process and uh, finish goods. All right. So that's all about your learning outcome seven. And keep in your mind, learning outcome seven. This point I will attach with your learning outcome six. So means when I will give you a questions, uh, which is uh, belongs to your learning outcome six. So in your final exam, then I'll give you a question of traditional and activity-based costing. I will also give you the actual factory overhead allocation cost. All right. So what do you have to do? Of course, you will you you will calculate your applied overhead is overhead using traditional and activity-based costing, and then you're gonna compare with your actual number, and then you have to tell me. Is it over applied or under applied? If this is the over applied or under applied, then you have to tell me what will be the accounting treatment for this over and under applied. All right. So that's all about your learning outcome seven. All right. So I quickly uh, focus more on the learning outcome uh, five, six, and seven. Learning outcome five is about the allocation of service cost to the production department, three methods, direct distribution, step down, algebra. All right, and learning outcome six is about the overhead allocation, total overhead allocation. Two methods, traditional and ABC. All right, ABC, of course, you have to keep it in mind, you have to find out post pool and post driver. All right, and then you have a depends two, three, four different uh, predetermined overhead rates put in the costing you're gonna have only one overhead rate right so that's all about your um, topic four which is uh, accounting for overheads right. so if you have any questions regarding this one please um, uh, send me an email right so I'll see you in next class thank you